No intro today. Okay, I am back. This is my second attempt at doing this. So I did make a reaction video to Dumb Data's video, Aaron Cairo, The Rise and Fall of Braille Skateboarding. His video is 27 minutes long. In my original reaction video, I did watch the entirety of his video and offer my thoughts. This may or may not have been a good idea. I thought personally this was a good idea because it can really show that I am willing to listen to every single thing he said and not steer away from any parts of the conversation that made me uncomfortable. That was my thinking. His thinking was saying, you just stole my video basically. I feel like the person being talked about reacting to the video is different to the original video, but nonetheless, we had to take the video down. So now we are getting the re-edited version where I'm going to watch his video in some parts, but more I'm just going to explain what he's saying then give my viewpoint. So if you do want to get the full context, you should watch his video on his channel that I will not steal in this video. I also left my original video as a member only on my channel. I'm absolutely not saying you should sign up to the members, but it is there if you did just want to see it or read all the comments. There was a lot and a lot of really, really interesting comments. And I didn't like that I had to take the video down because it kind of seems like I'm shearing away from talking about these topics when in reality, I was actually very active in the comments, responding to a lot of people and talking a bit about everything. But I think now in this condensed version, I can address some of the comment queries from the comments too. I also probably should say Braille did not put me up to this. I would assume that Braille doesn't like that I'm doing this at all. So this is Ricky Glaser going rogue, but I feel like it's my individual rights as a human being that's affiliated with Braille to have my own opinions on someone else's video. That is pretty much the situation we're in right now. The way that I'm going to do this is you may notice that I have this new hat. I'm going to play my previous reaction, but if I have anything to add, I will add it here too. And I will be wearing this new hat so you can tell if I'm in the future or if it was the original reaction. I also have my emotional support cup here with me. So let's get into it for you. Aaron Cairo and the rise and fall of Braille Skateboarding's YouTube channel. As an employee and skateboarder for Braille Skateboarding, I thought it would be very interesting for me to watch this video and kind of offer my insights and my thoughts and really see how someone like Dumb Data perceived the situation and see if I think he's accurate, if I think it's not. Braille Skateboarding is the largest skateboarding go. related YouTube channel. In terms of subscriber count and video upload volume, at 5.85 million subscribers, 5,419 5, uploads, videos, and oh is the brainchild goodness. of Aaron Cairo, that a sponsored many. skateboarder originally from Montana. The Braille <laughs> channel was created on December 26, 2005, only 10 months after the YouTube platform was launched, making wow, Aaron Cairo one of the first currently well-known skaters to begin uploading videos to the site. Okay, so in this part, basically, he just said the scope of Braille, they have over 5,000 videos, 1.8 billion views, and a bunch of different channels in different languages. What I said in my original thing was none of the other country channels are really active anymore, but the Russian one was active, but I believe with the war in Ukraine, all the monetization in Russia was turned off, so they've kind of like put that on pause. Dumb Data created this uh, total viewership numbers for the Braille videos. He created this himself and I've come to learn that it's inaccurate in a few different ways. Um, but basically what he's just showing in the video is that Braille's peak was very much in 2016 with 465 million views. Then it kind of like on a steady decline. And then recently it's been declining a lot more. One thing that I will say about this data that I come to learn after I recorded the other reaction was that the way that he got these numbers, all the views in 2023, these 26 million were created in 2023. But all these views from 2016, 465 million, they were created over the duration of 2016 to 2023. So that was over all of those years. So he just looked at the upload date and the total view count as it sits right now, which isn't quite the true representation. I feel like the graph still would look like this, but from these 2015, 2016 years, the views should flatten out a lot more because the backlog of Braille's videos is getting views over time. It's not like they got all these 465 million views in 2016. It was in this 2016 to 2023 time period. 2010, they got 5 million views, 1130. Ooh, we didn't grow in 12, 13. Wow, he got 30 million views in 2011. 85, wow, see, look, this is crazy. 2014 to 2015, 86 mil to 200 mil. 2016, 465 mil views, and then dropped off. Man, it was, 2019 was pretty similar to 2017. That's interesting. Dropping from 465 million views in 2016 
down to a relatively abysmal 26.5 million in 2023. To say that 26 million views is abysmal is like there's no other skate channels that's getting 26 million views in a year. Maybe Thrasher, maybe Barracks. So, okay, instead of Braille being number one, they're like number three. Like, I think that's an important thing to give context. Even someone that's like popping like Gifted Hater, he's not getting 26 million views in one year. So even at Braille at its low point right now is still very uh, a lot of strong viewership. Let's dive in together to find out who is Aaron Cairo, the man behind okay. the rise and fall of the Braille skateboarding YouTube channel. Okay, so in this chapter one, he basically just tells the story of Aaron's life that he moved from Montana to San Francisco area to try to make it as a pro skater. He had a bunch of sponsors and was just kind of like scraping by doing working random jobs and not making any money from skateboarding. Eventually that led to him getting kicked off of all the skate companies. And he made this dramatic edit of all his footage and posted onto the very, very, very early version of YouTube. And the video went like semi-viral at the time and got about 350,000 views and kind of like lit the YouTube spark in Aaron. That was basically the summary of his chapter one. Now we're into chapter two. As far as what contributed to Braille's rise on YouTube, the previously mentioned self-titled video part was clearly a reputational booster for Aaron Cairo, validating his skills, but it also acted as a benchmark for the soon-to-be prolific oh, I to content that creator I didn't even to chase it was views on the platform with more uploads. However, without the resources his sponsors provided, like product and filmers, how was Cairo going to move forward in 2005? Investing the time and energy to film another part and attempting to match or surpass the skill level he was skating in the initial YouTube part Dang, would likely sick. take years, and doing it with no sponsors would make it Double close nolly. to impossible. Back in the early days of the channel, Braille videos were shorter and didn't appear to have much structure. So if you guys don't know a whole lot about YouTube, YouTube has changed a lot over time and it reflects perfectly in this graph right here. I believe in this 2015 era, videos that were eight minutes or longer, you could put multiple ads in. So if you see your favorite creator make a video that's eight minutes and one second, it means they've made it just long enough so they can put multiple ads in and make more money from it, which like power to them, fair enough to them, but that's why this is reflected in the data. In this early 2005, eight era, a lot of people would post like 15 second videos just because you know, Instagram didn't exist, or TikTok didn't exist. So like you post those kind of videos on YouTube. Then here it became a bit more three, four, five minutes. And then I believe the change is probably there. And that's why it went longer. Were shorter and didn't appear to have much structure. But one clear detail that stands out is the success in viewership with how-to videos, mm -hmm. including a 13-year-old 90-second video focused on a beginner's fundamental milestone in skateboarding, the act of pushing. In this chapter, he doesn't really mention too much about Braille. He kind of just talks about between 2005 and 10, Aaron was just skateboarding casually and the video going viral on YouTube didn't really have any boom to his skate career. And he was just kind of doing his thing skating and YouTube was just sort of this side little thing that wasn't established at all that he would upload to a little bit. And it's from this 2010 and 11 where it became more serious. For this next Scientology part, I'm just gonna let it all play and then give some extra third person thoughts at the end. In analyzing Aaron's story, is his involvement in a relatively controversial set of beliefs known as Scientology. Scientology, considered a cult by some, or more neutrally a business slash religion, was established by American author L. Ron Hubbard in the 1950s. And among many other things, it is known for providing, for lack of a better term, a plethora of self-help courses to its members in exchange for monetary payments. Cairo has appeared in multiple Meet a Scientologist videos, with one of them getting uploaded to YouTube back in 2009, before he was known as the boss of Braille. But what significance does Aaron Cairo and Scientology have with anything regarding the development of Braille? Yes, I am interested to hear because there's lots of people in this complicated world, lots of people from different walks of life. Braille channel is about skateboarding, nothing else. There's no mention of any religious beliefs or political affiliation in any of those 5,000 whatever videos. So I'm interested to see where he goes with this. Any success story that results in the formation of a business particularly a successful business, regardless of the industry, requires money, not uncommonly in significant quantities, and Braille is no exception. Jumping ahead 10 years from the time the 2009 Meet a Scientologist video featuring Aaron was published, 
An American journalist with a reputation for covering Scientology-related news, Tony Ortega, released an article in 2019 that featured a photo depicting Aaron Cairo celebrating the achievement of reaching Scientology's silver meritorious with honors level patron status, which requires a cumulative donation sum of $750,000. Less than six months after the Ortega article dropped in 2019, Aaron uploaded a YouTube video on the Braille channel, which at the time had since accumulated several millions of subscribers, asking his audience to donate their money towards the renovation of a skate park in his Montana hometown. The problematic timing and subject of Cairo's video, where he's requesting his predominantly young audience to donate money to a remote skate park, not long after proudly standing for a photo with a trophy that honored him for donating $750,000 to an organization familiar with being embroiled in controversy, didn't go unnoticed. Particularly on skateboarding's longest standing message board, where additional linked articles from Ortega's website quoted Aaron Cairo in 2017, at the time posing for a Scientology publication that highlighted members who completed L rundowns. Information available regarding L rundowns in Scientology suggests that this process takes up to 50 hours to complete and can cost upwards of $60,000 for the auditing process, with an end goal of quote-unquote enabling a being to swiftly evolve into an unshakable, certain powerhouse radiating pure theta. Aaron Cairo, upon completion of the L10, is quoted as saying, my space is so big and so clean, and my flows are wide open. I got rid of masses that had been in my space for trillions of years. I truly uncovered my basic goodness and rightness as a being. The same article linked Cairo's YouTube success with his Scientology work, stating, He's still having daily cognitions directly related to L10, and his online traction has seen a noticeable uptick. The Truth About Scientology.com tracks Cairo's involvement as a member, steadily progressing with coursework completion from early 2009 to as recent as mid-2023, including reaching gold meritorious status, signifying they've donated a cumulative $1 million to Scientology. Still, besides this singular previously mentioned bad optics from Braille asking its community for skate park donations, what is the importance of Cairo being a relatively generous Scientologist patron, and how is it linked with Braille? Peak YouTube performance was in 2016, and it just so happens that Aaron completed 36% of his 25 Scientology courses in that year. While it's tempting to conclude, based on this information, that, just like the previous article said, Cairo's Scientology productivity can be tied to Braille's YouTube performance, it's worth keeping in mind that correlation does not necessarily mean causation but it is quite a damn. Being an outspoken advocate and extremely generous patron to an organization that's seen by many as a religion means that there's a chance that a portion, potentially sizable amount, of the money earned by Braille from YouTube ad revenue and income from all the additional entrepreneurial skateboarding endeavors associated with Aaron Cairo is going to find its way in helping to fund Scientology. Determining whether helping to fund Scientology is objectively good or bad, however, isn't exactly the most straightforward answer. Okay. Where to begin? I think I'm empathetic to the situation where it's like, if you have some personal beliefs and you have a personal life and then you have a business and you keep your personal life and your business like 100% separate, I can understand why it would be frustrating when people merge them. If you think about like some other religions and maybe, you know, someone is a member of a different religion and then in the religious newsletter, it like says their prayer or something. And then like you go to their business and you start quoting their prayer like at their business. I, I feel like personally, I feel like that's like a little bit distasteful. If Braille skateboarding in the videos were like saying things about their religion or things like that, I feel like then it becomes more fair game. But when you're just like going at someone's personal beliefs and private life that has nothing at all to do with their business or skateboarding, I feel like obviously people are still going to do things like that. But I kind of personally feel like that that's like, I don't know, kind of like a like a cheap shot kind of thing. Okay, that was past Rick, now future Rick. I stand 100% by what I said there. I think I phrased it pretty well to give my consensus. One thing that I did notice in the comments is Aaron gets so much, so much, so much negativity for being associated with Scientology, but he absolutely never gets any kind of praise for not mentioning Scientology in any of the videos ever. Some people mentioned in the comments like, dude, perfect, they're Christians, and they're always mentioning God in the videos and stuff. And it's like Aaron is never ever doing that. I think it is definitely worth noting that he does have these two things separate. The other thing that was interesting with the skate park, I 100% agree with Dumb Data that it's like bad optics 
and it wasn't a good look. And I'm sure Aaron would say that as well. Um, he does kind of misrepresent the daughter a little bit. This was well before my time, so I had absolutely nothing to do with this. But I believe they were trying to raise $200,000. And Aaron did personally give $50,000 of his own money, as well as saying like, hey, get behind this and try to help build this skate park. So like, if we do objectively look at it and say, hey, he's giving $50,000 trying to get this rally behind a skate park and get a skate park built. Is that the worst thing a human being can do? Like, I absolutely don't think so. I do agree it's bad optics, bad press, like all those kinds of things. But at the end of the day, he did put $50,000 where his mouth is and try to get a skate park built. And the skate park did eventually get built. But like, I think that got blown a little bit out of proportion as to how negative of a reception that that truly was. I think you need to have the distinction, like like what I keep saying is his personal life and his business is separate. And if in his personal life, he wants to do whatever with his money, he wants to believe whatever he wants, he can do those things. And then you should judge the business on just what the business is doing. What are the videos saying? Like, is he doing good for skateboarding? I think all those things need to be separated from his personal life. I don't think it's really that cool. I don't really think they need to be as intertwined as everyone is making it. And like Dumb Data said, he isn't the morality police and I'm not the morality police either. I am respectful of other people. And like I said, it's a complicated world. A lot of people have a lot of different views. And I think if you only hang out with people that agree 100% with the thing that you do, you're going to have a very closed off life. Aaron learned that YouTube can be monetized. At this time, Cairo's channel was not Braille, but instead was called Sprocket Damn, 7 in honor of Braille? his hometown snowboard crew back in Montana. Inspiration for calling his channel Braille came from what Cairo claims is a common optimistic phrase in skating when one says, I'm feeling this. So what Dumb Data basically said in that part is, it was late 2010 and early 2011 that we started to see consistent uploading in the form of what Braille has sort of become today, mainly with a lot of tutorials. And one of the tutorials of how to kickflip got 8 million views and the average view count over the first 55 videos was 300k, but heavily skewing it by that 8 million tutorial. And like I said, with the 8 million, it's getting views over time. It didn't get all the views back then. This two minute video is narrated by Cairo, who gives relatively detailed instructions on what your feet should do to perform a kickflip. And it's Aaron who's kickflipping in the video. I gotta say, like, Whenever we go and do like demos or events or whatever and kids come up to Aaron and they say like, yo, like you taught me how to kickflip. I think that is cool. It's like he put out these videos. He just filmed these videos like way back in the day too. And then like people can learn to get into skateboarding through that. And then like they're forever tethered to Aaron and be like, wow, he taught me how to kickflip. Like that was so sick. I think that's personally really cool. After the viral how to kickflip video was dropped, Aaron supplemented his YouTube growth trajectory with the Skateboarding Made Simple digital download series. This was a money maker for Cairo, an idea he said that was a turning point for him and Braille, which he mentioned in his 2019 book, How to Get a Billion Views on YouTube. So I never watched Skateboarding Made Simple. Honestly, doing that. What's the difference between doing that back then than having a Patreon now like Local Joe or Gifted Hater? I feel like it's basically the same thing. It was just Patreon didn't exist. So Simply Made Simple is basically the Aaron Cairo Patreon before Patreon existed, I think. That's how I look at it. Okay, basically in this part, what he's saying is in 2014, Aaron started the more traditional vlog style videos. And he was saying, looking back at the back catalog of videos, there's 400 videos that have over 1 million views, and there's 800 videos that have over 500,000 views. And in this 2013-14 period, Aaron was posting about two videos per day. And what he's concluding with this data is that year-on-year -year Braille is dropping in view counts by about 31% since 2017. Additionally, the average length of videos in 2023 are nearly 17 minutes per upload, mm -hmm. whereas 2012 videos averaged less than two minutes, meaning that Braille is pumping out more, longer content, but is floundering as a channel, comparatively speaking. Well, yeah, but that, oh, there's Rick. Like I said, that determines by the YouTube landscape. And like I was saying, all the videos were pre five minutes. I think YouTube. You couldn't even upload a video longer than 15 minutes for a very long time. The last time Braille achieved 1 million views on a YouTube video was what in 2022 on five separate occasions. Oh, in me and Caden. That year with a 21 minute <laughs> skateboard versus BMX. Funny board. thing with this is when I played him is like, I just play skate to play skate, have fun, make an entertaining video. But I could tell that he like really wanted to win. But then it's kind of silly because obviously you can't really play a game of skate 
bike versus skateboard because like they don't translate to each other and i ended up winning and then he was like kind of bummed then again in march with braille versus the pump track then I wasn't two times one. in July. Oh actually, yeah, I was there for the on roller two skates. consecutive days. First with the retractable roller skates upload, and then a video That's titled great. "I'm Sorry," where Cairo mainly reflects in a monologue about the channel's history. And finally, in late August of 2022, the world's strongest skateboard upload has since hit 1.2 million views. 2023's oh. best performing video was in late March with the 24 minute don't break the Amazon polycarbonate skateboard upload, which has since achieved nine. nine That's Rick. You know what's funny? All right, I'm getting a little bit derailed, but when we filmed this video, I filmed this TikTok. <laughs> Amazing comedy, right? And then I did a brand deal with Penny boards slightly after this. And then they saw this on my TikTok and they're like, yo, Ricky, like, what is this? And I was like, oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> views not too far off of 1 million. The kick flipping a glass skateboard with glass wheels upload remains the most viewed video on Braille's channel with over 28.5 million views and is likely the single best performing skateboarding centric YouTube video on the platform. Ooh, interesting. I always thought that Richie Jackson has the most viewed video part on YouTube. Yeah, 11 million. Wow, it is like a lot more. So in this part, he kind of like gets a little bit lost in the data. He starts talking about the gloss skateboard a lot and just kind of like some interesting metrics about titling and things like that, but nothing really super relevant to the story right now. I feel like we're losing narrative here. Data. Where's our consensus going? That year. Where's the story? Yeah, what, what does it all mean? What we can conclude is that Braille's YouTube channel is not performing even close to as well as it once did. An additional detail that I noticed towards the end of editing this analysis is that one of the key Braille members, Lance, left the channel around 2018. In this part, he's pretty much just going over Lance's arc with Braille and how he was a friend of Aaron and then he learned how to skateboard and it was kind of an integral part of planning the videos and making the videos and filming the videos and how he did leave in 2018 and how that may have had an impact on the channel. I can tell that Dumb Data like doesn't watch Braille because he hasn't mentioned a few things that I feel like were worth mentioning, but I've never met Lance. I don't really know that much about him, but I think the arc of him being Aaron's friend to film YouTube videos and then teaching him how to skate and like him doing like a tray flip and a hard flip, I think that was super compelling. And it really like ties in with Braille's like mission statement of like learn to skate. Anyone can learn to skate. Here's a trick a tutorial. I think that was really cool. And like, yeah, the channel probably did lose something when they lost Lance. I feel like Dumb Data, he hasn't mentioned Carlos, hasn't mentioned McNug, hasn't mentioned any scandals either. So I feel like we're only got like six minutes left. I wonder if he's going to try to like slip that in there. Aaron Cairo uploaded videos at a high frequency in order to provide a collection of content for viewers to stick around and enjoy. <laughs> yeah, we understand why Gloss Skateboard is viral. I don't think we need to really break that down. Scenario ties Braille as a brand and Aaron as an ambassador together in an entertaining YouTube video that even non-skaters can enjoy. What he's saying here is that Braille focuses their content strategy on being viral and bringing in people outside of skateboarding into skateboarding rather than trying to serve current skateboarders with traditional good skateboarding video parts like a website like Thrasher would be doing. He also talks about this marketing concept where something is either done quickly, more expensive or fast. And he's saying Braille is making a lot of cheap, fast videos and not making so much high quality, high expense videos. If you watch a recent video, there's not much energy coming from the people in front of the camera, <laughs> which makes it hard to stay engaged for more than 30 Savage. seconds or even at all. Reinforcing the fact that these fast food type videos don't have much thought behind them other than simply an improvised idea that has a rapidly upcoming deadline. In other words, recent Braille videos, for the most part, are cheap and quick, with quality being absent per the unattainable triangle. Everyone's different, and Braille managed to get nearly 6 million subscribers. And even then, most of the people in the videos are low energy, non-talkative personalities, which is the opposite type of person you want in front of the camera if your audience are impressionable children, or shifting the focus on spending the time to make higher quality, better thought out content that will hopefully be more worth the money to produce than the current era of paying unenthusiastic, despondent personalities <laughs> to throw on trucks screen. on the millionth random object and try to kickflip it on camera. 
but it's... my rule is like never go full YouTube. Okay. <laughs> okay. Dang. See, like I feel like he missed so much stuff. I think that was a pretty interesting video. I think this guy did pretty good research, but I do feel like he missed out on like a lot of stuff that might be like worth mentioning about the history of the channel. And like you can tell that he wasn't a fan and he just decided, yeah, I should research this. He could have mentioned Carlos. I feel like Carlos had a big point in growing the channel and him doing crazy, crazy stuff every single day on two channels, Braille and Braille Army, definitely had a huge impact in growing the channel so fast. So I feel like he did fail to mention some of the previous people that have come and gone aside from just Lance. I feel like this graph too is that you could cross reference this with all other skateboard YouTube channels. With Barracks, Thrasher, John Hill, Garrett Jenner, like those people. I feel like this like up and down bell curve would represent too because I feel like this 2016-2017 was the peak vlog era of YouTube. And back in that YouTube time was when People were posting daily, people were posting low quality content, but a lot and a lot and a lot. And then YouTube was pushing these big channels. So if you're a big channel and you post every day, that's how you get 465 million views. That's insane. The other thing that I forgot to actually mention in the filming of my reaction the first time was like how I said, this year on year data isn't exactly accurate. It would definitely look a lot flatter because a lot of these old videos are getting the views in these recent years. So it would flatten out. But I think he failed to mention that in 2019, 2020 was really the rise of TikTok and short form video. And I feel like that very much changed the whole YouTube landscape and content creators as a whole. So not even just the skateboarding industry and not only Braille's channel, but the whole landscape of how people consume content. Before people would go to YouTube and watch full videos, but now they can just swipe, swipe, swipe and watch all the skateboarding they want on TikTok and Instagram and all other short forms that branched out of TikTok success. So I feel like those are also very important factors to mention. But yeah, I did very much enjoy, look at this guy, 660 comments. I responded to so many comments to you guys and I really did like the back and forth that we were having. You guys did raise some points that I haven't considered and I think I expressed some things that I didn't have in the first video. So if you do wanna leave some comments on this one, I will get back to you, I will read all the comments. But yeah, I'm not making a third one of these. Two reactions is enough, but I definitely didn't want the narrative to be that Braille told me to take it down or someone else told me to take it down. This was purely a YouTube thing with dumb data telling me I couldn't have the whole video. So that's why I've remade it in this kind of annoying way for me, but it's all good. We're out here. That is it for this video. I like skate.